let's create a video streaming app using the U Web Framework and Rust. So this is the application that we're going to build. We have two components. The component on the left is the producer. This component communicates with the webcam, grabs the images coming from the webcam, and encodes them using VP9. Then it transfers those encoded images to the consumer using the use context API. The consumer is responsible for then decoding these video frames and presenting them to the user using the HTML canvas. This is going to be awesome, I promise. First, we need to install Trunk. Trunk will take care of serving our web application through the browser. Next, we need to add the WASM target to Rust. Now let's create the project. Now let's open the project using VS Code. Let's go ahead and install U. We'll have to delete like the default main and create our own. First thing to do is to import U. Then I want to create a functional component. For those of you that are familiar with React, this should be very, very familiar. And now we'll define the entry point for the code, which is going to be our good old main method. Now, let's go ahead and run this thing. We got the code to load. So if we change the source code and just save it, we can see how the page will hot refresh. Pretty neat, pretty useful for debugging. One of the challenges of doing WASM development is calling the browser JavaScript APIs from within WASM, in this case, from Rust. Luckily, this problem has been solved. There's this beautiful crate called WebSys, which I found while looking at the U search code, which exposes all the web APIs. Let's see if the classes that we need are exposed or not. So we need video encoder, check, <laughs> and video decoder. So this is very promising. Let's keep going and see how far we can get. Let's create the skeleton of the application. What I mean by that is we talked about a few components that we needed. So let's, let's create them and like position them. and a consumer. Let's integrate the components with the app. Now I'll add a CSS class so that I can create a grid which contains these two elements. I need to add classes to both the consumer and the producer so that I can select them using CSS.
Cool, so the layout is starting to look like we want it. I do not really care about black over blue, so let's fix it. We are now ready to connect the webcam. To accomplish this, as I mentioned, we need the Sys web library so that we can interact with the JavaScript APIs. All right, let's install WebSys. To access the JavaScript libraries, we need to activate individual features. These names here correspond to the JavaScript libraries that we want to use. So we'll have to go back and forth between our code and our cargo TAML to enable or activate these features individually. We also need to install WASM bind gen so that we can cast between Rust objects and JavaScript objects. This code is to query the media devices. Here we see that the compiler is complaining because of media devices, basically doesn't find that method. And that is because we need to activate media devices using cargo.taml. So now we have code completion, which is great. Now we want to open the webcam. So let's, let's just go. Here we use the webcam as the ID because that's the ID of the video element that we added to the producer. Once again, we need to add HTML video element to our cargo.taml. Now we need to initialize the streaming. Let's add this to the TAML again. Filter out all media devices, but the video cameras. Once again, we need to add another um, DOM element to the to the TAML so that we can execute a get user media with user constraints. Oh no, actually it was wrong. The method is right there. <laughs> to use native JavaScript uh, objects, we need to install JS Sys. We need to transfer ownership of constraints here. <laughs> now let's exe execute the devices query. Let's enable this feature, media stream. We also need to install Wasm bind gen features to do this transform. Let's wrap this function using a Wasm bind gen feature so that we can use async await syntax just like with Tokyo. Okay, now that we got the device, we just need to plug it to our video element. We'll, we'll go ahead and open a browser and let's see if it looks as expected. Uh, okay, <laughs> so yeah, I, I can see myself behind there, but uh, let's uh, add some CSS to fix this. Yeah, that looks a lot better. Let's keep going, guys. Let's BP9 encode this video stream. 
To do that, we'll use the new Web Codex framework that is available since Chrome 94. So pretty, pretty cutting edge, I will say. We need to get the video track out of this video element. So because we're going to be passing this element around when we create the box pointer so that we can safely share it. Here, we are just selecting any video track that we can find because we know that our video device has only one track, so this is fine. Let's enable video track. Now we need to initialize our video encoder. We need to enable video encoder. We'll add some console logs to see what's going on if we get an error. This handle will be called when there are new video frames encoded. You'll notice that even when we enabled video encoder init and video encoder in our cargo.tunnel, uh, basically Visual Studio cannot find these objects. And that's because it turns out that this is a, an unstable uh, API, so we need to pass an environment variable to enable it on top of the feature uh, being activated. To do that, um, we need to open our settings dot, um, JSON and add a, 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 an environment variable. Let's go ahead and reload. Hopefully this does the trick, we'll see. We need to enable a few more features, so console needs to be enabled too. Okay, the type of the closure does not match. I know what that is. We need to cast it. Hmm, this operation is unsafe. Okay, for now, I just want to print the thing. So let's just, let's just print the chunk. Let's configure the video encoder. So now that we configured our video encoder, we need to feed it with the video frames, or I'm sorry, with the images coming from the camera. To that effect, we'll use a media stream track processor. So let's go. 
So, ooh, processor. Let's enable all, all these things. All right, now for some reason, VS Code is extremely angry. So let's see why. It says that media stream track processor does not have these features, which is kind of weird because it's shield. Um, stream, stream processor, mm, media stream, media stream, track processor. So yeah, it should be there, but it is not there. And if we look at the source code, Jesus, go away. Okay. If we look at the source code, we can see that for some reason, they did not ship the library with media stream processor. Media stream track event. So media stream track processor is not there, but do not worry. What we're going to do is we're going to clone their repo and add it as our dependency to our code. I'm going to show you how to use cargo patch so that we can like uh, use a newer version of these libraries straight from Git. Let's go. I just want to verify that this object is available on GitHub, like the object that we're looking for. It is available on GitHub. So. So what we're going to do is clone the entire Wasm bindgen repository to our computer and then reference it from the project. So git clone, and we just get the URL from the website. So just get this thing here. Okay, now uh, we need to reference it from our cargo.toml using cargo uh, patch, I think. All right, so it looks like it is still angry and that's because of this space here. Fantastic, we got our processor to work now let's add a reader. So the reader will pull the frames out of the stream and send them to the encoder. We need to add a bunch of classes to our tunnel file. And then we either get a frame back or not. So this is the JS frame. Then we do something with it or we get an error. If we do get a frame back, then we want to cast it as a video frame. And then we want to unwrap it as a video frame. And checked into video frame.
This is to prevent leaks. So we passed the video frame to the encoder and we indicate that we are no longer going to use it. I forgot what to match on, so we mat we want to match on result. All right, the compiler says that encode does not exist. <laughs> why? Why will that be? Let's see. I cannot click on video frames, so I'm not sure if I forgot to add it here. Yeah, I forgot to add video frame here. One more compiler error. This is JS frame. Now, if you open a browser and go to the website, we should see the, um, the video frames. Inspect, and we see all the, so here we see all the video chunks coming out from the encoder. So this is looking great. All right, now we need to ship the frames from the producer component to the consumer. And as we said at the beginning of, the, of this video, we'll be using the use context hook that you exposes. It's just like the React use context hook. So let's just go for it. We are going to create our context inside the producer. Well, we're going to instantiate it inside the producer. So, All right, so this is our video context. Now we are referencing a type that doesn't exist yet, encoded video chunk wrapper. So let's let's create this structure. So we're going to use this type to uh, wrap the encoded video frames and send them to the consumer. It needs to implement a bunch of traits so we need clone, copy, partial, equal, and we want, we need to imp implement a reducer. And we need to write to this video context when we get a new frame. So here. Now we need to wrap our DOM with the provider. We need to create our component. We are almost done, guys. We just need to build the consumer. Let's go. Let's go ahead and subscribe to the context. So we'll use this second variable to store the de video decoder. So if the video decoder is none, we'll go ahead and initiate and initialize it. Let's add these to the terminal file. Actually these three, video decoder, video decoder config and video decoder in it. This requires two functions. It requires an error video and an output. We'll define this 
later, but we need these two variables. Then we initialize the video decoder. Then we initialize the video decoder config. Video codec, same codec that we use for the encoder. And then we save an instance. Let's define these two functions. So error, error video. First thing we're going to do is to create a box pointer because we're going to use this chunk in a couple of functions. Now we need to get the width and height from the video so that we can uh, render it correctly to the canvas. Let's select the canvas from the DOM. As always, let's add this to the manifest HTML canvas element. Then we're going to set the width and the height. Finally, we are just going to render the image. After rendering the frame, we're going to close it. Beautiful. And we want to bring it there. All right. I missed a couple of semicolons. So here and here. Save. And let's move on to the final stage. So here, all we are going to do is receive the frames from the producer. So if the video chunk is not known, then parse it. Now we are going to read the data from the chunk. We need to initialize a vector to store the data. The encoder takes encoded video chunk objects, so we need to pass that to it. Final line of code, other than fixing compiler issues, encode, encoded video chunk. Now let's fix all the compiler errors, but this is it. This is all the code. We'll see. Okay. So we're missing this import here. 
uh, canvas, blah, blah, blah. Right, one more error here is error video vector. That was making this, fix this variable name here. All right, couple of details here. We need to unwrap this and cast these functions. All right, one more bug here. We need to unwrap this video context too. Yeah, those optionals are really kicking our ass. <laughs> okay, this one is funny. Here I want to initialize the vector with size chunked, chunk dot byte length. So I need to change this by a semicolon. It's just one of those things. And here we want to decode, not encode. All right, so at least now it compiles. <laughs> Let's see what we got. Jesus, we're getting an exception. I can I can feel it. Bunch of uncaught exceptions. That's because, guess what? Some of our callbacks are being released. So what we need to do is to retain them. To actually to forget them so that they don't get released. After assigning the functions here, we'll just say error video forget. The final bug I found is that we were setting the video streaming over and over because there's nothing that prevents this piece of code from being called multiple times. So using the use effect API will ensure that we get called only once. All right, so let's reload the page. <laughs> okay, so the aspect ratio is obviously wrong, but at least like the page is not constantly refreshing. So let's take care of these things. So first thing we want to do is um, let's fi fix the um, CSS and like lock the the width of the canvas. All right, so let, let's fix the aspect ratio and we should be good to go. All right, to fix the aspect ratio, <laughs> we need to fix these coordinates here, not these coordinates values. So this is 720 by 1280. So they were backwards. All right, let's specify the uh, width and height settings. Let's ensure in the TAML file that we have media stream track settings. So we do have media track settings, make sure to add this, else it won't work. Okay, it works. Now let me share some conclusions about this project. All right, so I have four points to share with you. Point number one, the U framework is awesome. It works. The syntax is comparable to React. So great job, uh, you team, this is amazing. Number two, I remember when TypeScript came out and it feels similar to this, but better. Let me explain myself. When TypeScript came out, you spent a lot of time trying to figure out the types and like bind them to JavaScript types, which we, we did the same here. But based on the size of this project, like all the WASM initiatives. I believe that while TypeScript was more like an incremental enhancement, enhancement to JavaScript, this is more of a leap. Using Rust is a leap for web developers. Number three, 
I felt extremely comfortable using the web frameworks. I found types for most of them. So we're talking web codecs, web transport, web RTC, all these libraries that I personally use. So great job team. Uh, number four, I did spend <laughs> a lot of time compiling. So that was not uh, amazing, but pretty sure the, the team is working on it. So great job. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one.